Good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for being here this morning. And we have an amazing uh, guest this morning with us, Penny Abbey Wardina. She is the uh, Commissioner for International Affairs for New York City since 2014. Mm -hmm. And uh, she has been leading this, the New York City's global platform for promoting its goals for a more just and accessible society. Um, since her appointment, her international affairs team has launched a series of initiatives. Uh, and these initiatives are connecting New Yorkers and city agencies to the diplomatic community, because you know uh, New York City has I think the most number, the largest, of, yeah. the largest yeah. <laughs> in the world, uh, as being the host of uh, the United Nations. Um, prior to joining uh, New York City uh, office, Penny was the director of girls and women integration at the Clinton Global Initiative. Uh, for those of you who are not familiar with this uh, initiative, it's a nonpartisan organization, uh, and it deals with implementing innovative solutions to the world's most pressing problems like climate crisis, immigration, equality. Uh, Penny was most recently uh, this week at the Urban 20 Summit uh, held in Tokyo as part of the G20 uh, Summit, which will be held in, in June uh, in, in Japan. And, uh, and he's, she's been talking about how New York City itself implements these um, uh, goals um, okay and sustainable development goals and um, she's going to talk about them briefly and then we will open it for questions and comments so please do um, welcome uh, Penny Aberwardina. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. It is really um, an honor to be here. And thank you um, to the Foreign Correspondents Club of Japan for inviting me today. Um, I am Penny Abbey Wardina. I'm the Commissioner for International Affairs. And, you know, the agency that I lead at in New York City has been around for over 50 years because New York City is a host to the largest diplomatic corps. Um, so we're host city while the U.S. government is host country um, to the United Nations headquarters, 193 permanent missions. We also have 116 consulates and about 70 international trade commissions. So international economic development also runs through my agency. When I inherited um, the agency back in 2014, it was largely focused on the operational dynamic that the diplomats have in New York City. So diplomatic incidents, security issues, um, issues related to the parking program. Diplomatic parking is always important no matter where you are. Um, but what the mayor and I had envisioned was how can we create a platform to exchange best practices with other cities and countries. Um, the mayor had a very, uh, Mayor de Blasio has a very, um, has a very ambitious um, perspective in terms of how government can benefit the people through the proper policies. So one of the first things that we instituted in um, in New York City in 2014 was um, a whole new grade. We created what's called universal pre-K, and we put about 70,000 four-year-olds to school for the first time in public education. Um, we also launched what's called IDNYC. Um, it is a New York City identification card for all New Yorkers, including those who are undocumented, as long as they could prove their residency in New York City. Um, and as you know, identification cards are very important to every citizen. That's how you access city services to picking up your children from school. Um, and so this became um, a real opportunity for us to look around the world, look at other cities, and see who are doing creative things and where would we want to exchange best practices and create relationships for collaboration. What was very fortuitous was around the same time, um, the global community um, through the UN uh, started working on the sustainable development goals. And in September 2015, 193 countries signed on to what are called the SDGs, the Sustainable Development Goals. Um, there are 17, and they range from gender equity to climate action uh, to um, life underwater, cleaning up our, our oceans. 
And what we decided to do was take our vision for New York City, our development agenda, which we call One NYC, and we mapped it to the sustainable development goals. And because we had so many synergies between what New York City was already looking to achieve with our eight and a half million citizens and with what this global compact look like. And so what we decided to do is create what is called a program called Global Vision Urban Action. The end of the day, all of the national governments agree to the SDGs, but the only way for them to achieve it is if we as citizens and communities and cities are doing the work on the ground. So our Global Vision Urban Action became this platform for us to exchange best practices. This is what we're doing in transportation and how we're looking to lower pedestrian deaths, for example. This is what we're doing to create more um, access and reduce stigma around um, around mental health. And what we would do is uh, partner with different um, UN agencies and member states and invite the international community into this conversation. Um, we have evolved that programming in a couple of different ways. We launched a program called New York City Junior Ambassadors. At the end of the day, if we are talking about these policy initiatives, it's our citizens that need to understand this. And one of our best entry points is our young people. And so with our Junior Ambassador program, we focus on 12 and 13 year olds throughout our five boroughs. They learn about the SDGs. Um, they have access to a number of curriculum, but at the end of the year program, they have to do something in their community that is related to that SDG. So SDG 14 is life underwater. This is you know, a global issue of plastics in our ocean. How are we cleaning up in a significant part of our um, our climate action strategies. But at the end of the day, the way that we have brought it home to our youth is we have um, junior ambassadors who are committed to cleaning up the South Bronx River. It's one of our filthiest waterways in New York City. And now you've taken this very, you know, sort of um, ambitious goal that people around the world are talking about in their different, in their different contexts, but what they're able to do, these young people, is have take action in their community. And so now we're starting to bridge that gap between these big policy ideas at the UN and how people think about it every day in their life. So, um, you know, and I, I want to say these were these are all programs that were launched in 2015, 2016. And what happened, um, I'm going to be very frank, is uh, the, the current um, administration in the U.S., the Trump administration, um, came in very powerfully um, fighting the things that we had thought we think are very important, climate change. So one of the first acts that um, Trump did was pull the U.S. out of the Paris Climate Accord, um, which the global community had agreed to just two years earlier. Um, New York City, within 24 hours, committed ourselves directly uh, to the uh, Paris Climate Accord with a with an executive order. And I think something important to remember about New York City and the collective of cities around the U.S., um, New York City alone is as large, if not larger, than 141 countries from a population perspective. And we have a $90 billion budget and things that we do in New York City um, have implications. And so we want to be leading by example. Um, we worked with what we call in the U.S. the U.S. Conference of Mayors, and now over 400 U.S. cities have committed directly to the Paris Climate Accord. So a really powerful moment to show the power and leadership of cities as you see national governments stepping out of multilateral agreements that we believe are very important, like the Paris Climate Accord. Um, so that's also, you know, while we, we had done this work um, prior to the Trump administration, the current reality in New York City has brought um, an even more, has brought a greater urgency to what we call city diplomacy. And so part of the reason we are participating in the Urban 20, um, the purpose of that is um, around a communique to ensure that the G20 recognize that the role of cities, the, the, the greater part of the world population are moving into cities. Um, we are going to be the hubs of both the solutions and the challenges. And so how do we ensure that our voices are part of that? So that was at the heart of the creation of the Urban 20. Um, the Tokyo is 
host and um, the, your governor just hosted um, the Urban 20 because of course the G20 will be here in a couple of weeks. So that is, I think, the an important um, entry point in understanding why New York City and other American cities participate in these global coalitions is that we in this um, time want to ensure that uh, people know that New Yorkers and Americans are interested in multilateralism and the importance of this of this engagement. So I will end it there. If there are any questions from you or others, I would love to expand on. Yes, um, let me just start um, by just asking one question myself, and then I'll ask the, the floor. I'll leave it to the floor. Um, what are these cities' most pressing problems in 21st century, um, especially you know, going back to your um, comment about the communique, the, yes. the results uh, that mm -hmm. came out of the mm -hmm. communique? What are the similar common problems that you notice here in Tokyo, for example, which mm. is your first time, as far as I understand, yes. uh, and other cities that you visited, especially New York City? Absolutely. Um, you know, one of the, and, you know, before I answer that question, part of the reason that New York is very active in the Urban 20 um, is to, we are actively recruiting a movement um, around what we're calling the Voluntary Local Review. Um, so going back to the UN and the Sustainable Development Goals, every summer um, there is a high-level political forum where your foreign ministers come and they um, do the work around the SDGs in preparation for the heads of state during the UN General Assembly. At the high-level political forum, every year they focus on four or five sustainable development goals. During that period, every country is invited to submit a voluntary national review as to where they are in terms of achieving the SDGs. Knowing that our government was unlikely to do a voluntary national review, New York created the concept of a voluntary local review, and the Secretary General in the UN um, agreed to let us submit that as part of the formal process. And this is not um, this is not an exer exercise in undermining or usurping sovereign government um, authority or member state authority. Member state authority. This is really a recognition that to achieve the SDGs, you need all of the all of the partners involved, including cities. And so part of the reason that New York City is so active with the Urban 20 is that we're hoping that these city coalitions will join us in this voluntary local review, and we're talking with the Tokyo government about that right now. Now, what is clear um, that we all have in common and what is the most urgent is climate change and climate action. So New York City, very recently, as of a couple of weeks ago, have banned single-use single, um, single -use plastics, uh, plastics purchased in city government, um, in city government. And that is a huge, uh, that's a significant move. We purchase about 500 tons um, a year, which is, which is extraordinary when you think about. And so what we have done is ensure that um, New York City government is taking a leadership role. And so you, we've heard a lot of that conversation happening over the last couple of days is what kind of role can cities take um, in climate change, right? Carbon. Um, emission reduction is a significant piece of it. We also just launched our Green New Deal, um, which is really focused on what it, what looks, you know, New York City's buildings. We got, we have over a million buildings. How are we going to retrofit existing, um, un, you know, un, unsustainable buildings? How are we going to be building the next generation of buildings? So we are really focused on reducing carbon emissions in that perspective. Um, economic development and economic security of our, um, of our citizens is, um, you know, everything is connected to that, right? Affordable housing, um, you know, job training. And so that's uh, a second piece that is a significant focus. And then I think um, migration and immigration issues and how we are ensuring that, um, you know, those that are coming into our communities and borders, um, you know, for New Yorkers, we are, uh, you know, uh, eight and a half million people with over 800 languages spoken and 140 um, countries represented. And so we think that we thrive because of our diversity and our celebration of that inclusion. And so we are looking at the movement of people around the world and we want to share how we have been able to um, include these communities um, in a in a healthy way amongst our, our um, in our city. So I think those would be the three areas that New York City is very interested in, and we heard other cities as well as Tokyo discuss during the Urban Twenty. Great. Does anybody have any comments or any questions? Yes, sir. Please. Hello. Please introduce yeah. yourself. Yes, please. I don't Do you think have there's a mic. Thank you. <laughs> Am 
my name is Kurt Sieber. I'm an associate member here at the club. Um, first, I'd like to say one of my daughters, with her family of five, is totally New Yorker. Oh, really? <laughs> uh, also, they are living out in Rye and not in the center, okay. but uh, Rye is beautiful. Uh, oh, yeah, it is, yeah. yes. <laughs> and, uh, but they're working every day their way on Grand uh, to Grand Central. Oh, oh yeah, well, the, uh, the office is all Wall Street. So, oh. uh, yes. So thank you so, so much for coming today. Uh, in connection with the climate change, my question is, um, what is the policy in, in terms of energy mix, uh, which is um, New York is uh, aiming at, which of course is a very important part of the climate change uh, situation? So, the energy mix. Energy mix. Um, how about nuclear? How about coal? How about yeah, water? It, yeah. yeah. So, uh, well, what no. are you what are you pushing in particular? That Thank is you, no, that is a that is a great question, and we just actually um, are in the process of working with Quebec around hydropower. Um, that is something that I know the city is looking at very closely. Um, you know, this is not my area of expertise, but if you're interested in more, I could connect you with our Office for Sustainability that has leadership on that. But hydropower is really where we're um, investing right now. Thank you. Uh, any other questions? Or any comments? other New Yorkers? Any other New Yorkers? <laughs> yes. Even part time New Yorkers. Has anyone studied? Or, yes, yeah, please. please. <laughs> Oh, they actually have mics now. They actually now, have yeah. a mic now. If you want to, yeah. Thank you. Take well, thank you for your presentation. So I'm interested in the UN Climate Action Summit uh, to be held in September. Yes. So is New York City going to make some advocacy to that summit as well? Are we going to what? Uh, make some advocacy or? Advocacy. Mm. So we work with, uh, the next summit is in Peru. Uh, okay. uh, UN Climate Action yeah, the climate Summit will be held in New York City, yeah. Oh, the one in, in September. September, of course. Yeah, sorry, I'm thinking about the um, the, the COP, yeah, <laughs> which I think is in Peru. Um, absolutely. So this, um, the the question that he's asking about, um, there are actually going to be six high-level um, head of state um, summits during the UN General Assembly, I think the most in a very long time, including a review of the SDGs, but the sec Secretary General is focusing one of the high-level um, summits on climate. I think the last one was in 2014 when I was appointed. Um, New York City is very involved. We are not only helping to facilitate a number of the events that they are organizing around the city, um, we will be absolutely uh, launching um, you know, some, some new initiatives and showing the leadership of host city. I will say before the climate summit, the president of the General Assembly, I believe on June 3rd, um, is going to be announcing that the UN is going to go plastics free. And here's a perfect example of New York City announced that we were going to do that you know, just two weeks ago. And that is something that we want to show the UN and the global community, um, that host city is, is hearing what your challenge is, um, your, what the challenge you're making to the global community, and we're here to, to step up to that challenge. So we are absolutely involved with the Climate Summit. Mm -hmm. um, let me ask a question about um, what the private sector can do to implement these SD, uh, SDS, uh, the, the, SDGs. The SDGs, because um, it seems like it's a buzzword, which we all love yeah. <laughs> to hear, and which we all love our governments to basically say that they're implementing. But what can the um, private sector do to help achieve this? You know, that it is a great word. You know, one of the things um, with, and this is the focus of our youth program, is that we want to move away from the SDGs being a buzzword and an actual function. Of, the most important thing about the SDGs is that it is a functional framework for us to take issues that we're all working on in our communities and be able to have a common language to talk about and exchange best practices beyond borders. The private sector is equally important in that work, right? You have companies like Unilever who are thinking about sustainability in their corporate value chain and the way that they talk about that and the way that they exchange best practices and get feedback from civil society and government is that we're all talking about this via a similar framework. 
So there's something called the UN Global Compact. Um, there are dozens, if not hundreds, of companies that have signed up to that. But companies are, you know, I used to work at the Clinton Global Initiative where we work primarily with governments and companies understanding that philanthropic dollars are important, but really what you do in core business is what matters, right? And so when they are thinking about sustainability, when they're thinking about gender equity um, from, a, from the perspective of the SDGs and the framework, this is an opportunity for us to then exchange best practices. Um, but you know, I, I bring up gender equity because I used to run that at CGI and I used to work with corporations. And I used to say this is great you know, to have philanthropic dollars to address domestic violence through your foundation. But what if you look at all the women that go missing because of domestic violence in your value chain, that you're going to take that more seriously in the way that you train both men and women to handle something like domestic mm -hmm. violence. You know, this is where you need to think about personal time off, how you create safe spaces for women. It's not because they're trying to do something nice for you. It's because it directly impacts yeah. your bottom line. Mm -hmm. And I think mm -hmm. that has become true around climate issues. Mm -hmm. And so companies have increasingly been thinking about that. The UN is organizing them um, in this UN Global Compact. And the mm -hmm. SDGs are that common framework for civil society, government, private sector to talk to each other mm -hmm. around not only exchanging best practices, but this is what's important about the voluntary local review. New York submitted um, ours last year. It's public. It's online. Mm -hmm. And we talk about what we do that's really great, but we also talk about what our challenges are. Because what we need are like the Tokyos and the Londons and the Nairobis to say, oh, New York's having this problem. We've actually figured it out. And then our delegations can meet. And you know, this is what we actually need to move this agenda along. It's not happening at the national government level. It needs to happen at our level. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Any other questions? Yes, please, ma'am. Please introduce yourself. Thank okay. you. Hello. Um, my name is Joan Anderson from the SGI Buddhist Group. And we have quite a large membership in New York. And once before, in the year 2000, um, at the Bay, after the Beijing Plus Five conference, we organized a big event bringing some of the speakers from the UN meeting yep. to talk to women of New York. And it was one of the most inspiring um, things I've ever been involved with, actually, and I, I really applaud everything you're doing, trying to link the UN to the local citizens. Um, and so I'm interested to know whether you're doing anything around young women's leadership. I know you got you said you had the U young ambassadors, yeah. and also whether New York is considering joining the um, ICANN cities appeal towards the ab abolition of nuclear weapons and the support of the treaty for the prohibition of nuclear weapons. Yes, we have. Um, we are. We have been um, reviewing that. The uh, mayor De Blasio has met with the mayor of Hiroshima, who I believe is the chair of that. Um, the the question regarding young women's leadership that is both happening. Um, at the city level, I mean, we have we have taken on um, young women's leadership in coding. There are a number of different initiatives throughout city agencies that is that are focused specifically on that. But you know, the junior ambassador program has been particularly interesting because the SDG around gender equity is not only empowering young women and having them think about um, their their issues and the way that they empower themselves. But we also need to talk about how young women work with young men, right? This is not an us against them kind of thing. We need boys and men as allies in, in creating a, an equal playing field. And so that is something that we have taken on very seriously. Um, we have what is called um, um, a suite of policies around leveling what we call leveling the gender paying field. And this includes, it is now legal in New York City to ask what your previous salary was, because that is irrelevant to your ability to do a job and get paid what you should. Um, affordable um, health care, um, paid sick leave, um, parental care. I mean, most people outside of the US are shocked to find out, but that is not guaranteed in the US. And that is something that local authorities can mandate. And New York City became the third in our country um, to allow uh, parental leave. Um, so once you have a baby, you don't um, have to come back to work right away or lose your job. So there are a number of things that we're doing. And I think it, it reinforces the role of women both in the economy, but the importance that we play in the ecosystem. 
And I think men have to be very much part of that conversation. And so when we do our junior ambassador work with these young women, we make sure that that is part of the conversation too. Thank you. Yes, please, sir. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, I really appreciate uh, your you know, visiting the, the Japan and also making such kind of the presentation to us. Uh, my name is Masami Doi. I am uh, president of the Korea. This is a, a consultant, consultant agency and also a, a board member of uh, a sustainable uh, promise goal, or, uh, sorry, uh, SPJ uh, of Japan, the, 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 the Suzuki-san. <coughs> uh, uh, my question is uh, the current uh, Trump administration withdraw the Paris Accord and uh, uh, the multilateral city-to-city -city relationship is more important than the previous time. I really uh, agree with your idea. Uh, on that, uh, the condition, uh, I think uh, the, the cities uh, could exchange the people more and more. Mm -hmm. the, that's the moment the thing that you could do, you know, the cities to city, you know, exchange the idea or exchange the people also. Mm -hmm. uh, so the concerning such kind of exchanging uh, the idea or people, uh, what do you think about uh, education or, you know, university or university relationship or or exchange university people, or if uh, you could make such a lecture in some university in Japan, I think you know the next generation is more important than the current generation yeah. in the <laughs> SDG. <laughs> I think so. Uh, the we are now, you know, the, almost in a, just a transfer the current situation to the next generation. So uh, the what do you think about uh, such uh, uh, exchange of the? Mm -hmm. e the people or education. Uh, I am also the working on a uh, uh, professor as a uh, professor in Yamagata University. So uh, I really interested in education. Uh, Absolutely, in that is something. And you know, New York City has so many phenomenal higher education institutions. We were just talking about Columbia, where um, where I went to school. Um, that is that is definitely a priority. You know, when I think about the next generation, we have so far focused on our on our very young youth, and I think the higher education and the acad um, the college level is really our next, um, should be our next focus. If you have ideas of what that exchange could look like with Japan, I would be very interested in learning more about that. Um, you know, these are the kinds of opportunities that I think social media, I mean, you said you're with it, we have to also get very creative because Social media has like sort of really brought down the barriers of distance, right? So if you can't get to a Japanese university in a rural area, there are still very creative ways to reach them. And that is something that we are looking to um, participate more in, in partnership with the UN. Um, the Deputy Secretary General has what's called this um, SDG Strategy Hub. And on it is Richard Curtis from One um, Global Citizen. These are these like, you know, Uber, um, campaign developers of you know social media marketing and I think that's really important right how do you connect the SDGs and this work to to music and entertainment and where these young people are actually going how do you reach them where they're at um, and so we're thinking very very strongly about that but would love if you had any ideas to talk to you after thank you very much thank you anyone who would make it yeah, comment please. or yes please Yes, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, my name is Shion Seno. I'm from Global Citizen, but I'm based in Japan, oh, good. actually. Um, I, you guys are Uber marketer. Thank you. <laughs> We're trying. Uh, so I'm based here in Japan, and as you mentioned, you know, we're trying to get all the sectors involved with the SDGs and thinking about how they can contribute to pushing forward for the 2030 agenda. Um, one of the key partners, I believe, in the field are the private sector, coming, you know, going along with the question that you posed. But uh, I do, I've seen difficulty really getting engaged with the private sector, especially in a place like Tokyo, where there's so many companies. I don't think there's a comp there's a city this dense with so many heads heads of companies all involved in this tiny tiny city, um, and there are so many small to middle companies as well. Yeah, which is interesting. Yeah. 
And I think there should be a way to really engage with them as well, because what we see right now is this trend for larger corporations that have a little bit more luxury to somehow contribute, but I don't think we've been able to really mobilize or leverage the power that small to middle businesses have. And so my question to you, and one thing that has been on my mind was, uh, how do you incentivize the, the private sector, especially perhaps smaller to mis middle business yeah. businesses to really get involved with all the, the issues that we should be tackling together? Yeah. And if you had of any ideas or, or uh, examples that you've seen around the world or maybe in New York that perhaps could be implemented here, we, I would love to know a little bit about and that. And let me tell you, Penny, before you answer, 99% of Japanese enterprises are actually, businesses are actually Based. SMEs. Yeah. So it's a that's big, a, big, a big, big figure. <laughs> what percentage? 99%. Really? It's, yes. That's we amazing. only hear the big names, but 99% yeah. are small, medium enterprise, please. You know, it, it is a, it's a really good question because you, you put it right. The, the larger companies have the luxury of doing good to a certain extent. I think this is where consumer behavior becomes really important, right? We're, we get to choose where we put our dollars, and now I'm speaking specifically to those um, that are either in retail or, or manufacturing a good. But I'll say, you know, what the city has done specifically so in sustainability, not only are we exploring things like hydropower and investing in that, we also need to invest in what consumer behavior looks like. And so we partnered with Swell. Are you guys familiar? Swell are those like metallic water bottles. Mm. Um, you know, plastic is an issue in particular with plastic bottles, right? And so we partnered with Swell. They gave us, I think it was an $8 million donation, but they gave every high school student a Swell bottle. Because that is what, but it's smart on them too, right? Because you get these kids like excited about their swell and then you have future consumers of that. But it's also a great partnership for the city because we're also able to start changing behavior amongst young people. Um, but I think the consumer engagement, the consumer demand ends up being one of the most important in terms of, you know, we've done so much talking and there's so much, um, you know, marketing around the triple bottom line. And if companies aren't getting that, I feel like the next step, and I think Global Citizen's been doing a really good job of it, is we have to get the consumer base educated about every time you like choose to ask for a straw, you should feel really guilty about it, <laughs> you know, because you know what happens to that straw. And I think that actually is the way that we should think about all the things that we consume, but we need to be educated to do that. And so, you know, it's a it's a really hard question, um, just because in the U.S. in particular, in New York City, the triple bottom line is being hammered at you in every which direction, especially if you're an entrepreneur. But at the end of the day, if you don't act like that, I think the shift is going to have to be in what consumer demands. Can you explain for those who are unfamiliar what is triple bottom line? The triple bottom <laughs> yes, line. Please. What is that? Profit, <laughs> climate, and people. Yes. Right. Yes. Okay. Um, and that is sustainability, that is decent work, um, and that is you make money, right? You're not probably going to make as much money as if you are completely ruining everything else, exactly. but you are still profit. You're still profitable. Thank you. Um, any other questions? Did you have one more question? If, please. Thank you. Um, you you uh, <coughs> was... <coughs> You were raising the question of pedestrian uh, protection in in um, yes. in New York and uh, Japan presently, and even Prime Minister Abe is presently getting involved in that. Uh, we have a lot of um, uh, not only pedestrian, but particularly children pedestrian, which are being killed uh, on the road. Is it high here? I don't have to. Uh, and. Uh, the uh, one of the it's not the only reason but uh, yes. um, one of the reasons is that uh, there are lots of elderly drivers I'm one of them by the way uh, uh, on the roads and uh, partially with dementia type of uh, yes. Yes. Uh, problems and uh, so how are you handling in the United States or in New York the, uh, the question of uh, elderly drivers? 
Exactly. I mean, we've had a very unfortunate incident just recently whereby an elderly uh, driver, uh, I'm, I'm not pointing at you, sir, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> an elderly driver sadly uh, made an accident and, and uh, a mother and uh, her young uh, child was killed. So it's a big problem uh, in the city. It is a big, I don't know the answer to that specifically. When I talked about, um, you know, and this is a, again, an example of replicating ideas. Um, Sweden is the one that really sort of um, pioneered what we have essentially taken and replicated in New York City. Um, and that is everything from lowering the speed limits to creating more bike and pedestrian walkways that are more clearly defined by big like pot, you know, plant holders, things like that. But it's, it's literally making streets more friendly to both bicycles and to pedestrians and asking drivers to slow. We have an agency that is focused on supporting our aging population. They are a population that is very valued in New York City and we need to think about them not only in terms of their safety when driving, but accessing public transportation. Um, the way you really get around New York City is using the subway. Um, not all subway um, entrances have um, have uh, an elevator, right? And so if you're aging with a wheelchair or with a walker, you can't get down there. So these are the kinds of strategies that we're, we're trying to, to take on. It's a great question. I don't know the answer to that specifically. It's a very specific one um, that I'm not aware of, but um, that is very unfortunate though. Um, anybody else? Or let me ask you again then, uh, yeah. while people are thinking about the next comment or the question. Um, so you, this is your first time in Tokyo, and um, comparing- I have really not seen anything of it. <laughs> okay, so it's we'll let you go. It's my only day, if you have recommendations, send me in some direction to walk. <laughs> we'll let you go in about 10, 10 or so, 10 minutes or so. Um, and uh, have you been to London? Of course, yes. you've been to London. Mm -hmm. And uh, so if you compare London, New York City, and Tokyo, uh -oh. um, I mean, to my mind. <laughs> I think she's gonna ask me a question, I'm gonna get in trouble. Okay, um, <laughs> no, <I'm teasing>. ob <laughs> obviously. Um, because of the recent protests going on, uh, dealing with cr climate crisis in London, for example, mm -hmm. to my mind, the image of London now is climate. They're the leader. Uh, New York City, I lived there for two years and I dearly uh, cherish my memories there. It's about immigration and diversity and, and welcoming people like myself. Um, what would you say Tokyo could be a global leader in <laughs> for future? Just because um, as an outsider who's never been here before, depending, you know, based on your just brief stay here. That's a really good question. Um, that is hard, and I think that cities evolve, right? You said you lived in New York City yes. like about a 10 years ago? Uh, recently. recently, recently, two years ago, yeah. Oh, two years ago. Two years ago. Um, <laughs> it's just because, it's, you know, it's funny that you said immigration, but I think climate is really the way that okay. we um, are thinking about ourselves because of what happened with Superstorm Sandy a few years ago. We've really had to think about how do we how do we look to the future recognizing that we are so vulnerable to climate change? I mean, we're an island, I think we have like 500 miles of coastline. Yeah. You know, that is, that is really scary given the types of storms that have been hitting the East Coast in the US these days. Um, with Tokyo, you know, I have not been here long enough to say, but there, um, there is so much potential in how Tokyo is going to address its aging population and work with youth in addressing that. I don't know what your mm. what the Tokyo government is going to do, but I think um, I think we were talking about this earlier. But out of all the OECD countries, this has one of the the oldest populations. I mean, that is a significant both boon and you know a challenge that is going to have to be dealt with. And I'm going to be curious to see what um, innovative approaches are going to be be, um, mm -hmm. be shared by the, the Tokyo government. And I think climate is, the, climate is the other area, you know, plastics, given the population, I think it's 30 million, the Tokyo yeah. metropolitan area. area. Yes. I mean, what, what you all are doing in terms of consumption is gonna become game changing, I think, mm -hmm. for, um, for the future. And this is a technology hub, I mean, that, 
mm -hmm. what is going to come out of that is going to be amazing. Yeah, Japan is basically out of all the countries I lived in uh, is basically I think the top there out of uh, the league when it comes to recycling. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, everybody can attest to that. Yeah. Does anybody else have any comments? Any questions? Yes, please. Second question. Thank you. Sorry, just to take advantage of this opportunity. Um, I was at a conference here in Tokyo the other day about responsible investing. Yeah. And of course, a lot of companies are not now just looking at CSR mm -hmm. in an isolated way, but really trying to make their whole businesses more um, environment friendly, people friendly, etc. And I wondered, are you, given that Wall Street is <laughs> yes. on your doorstep. Is that, do you engage with the Wall Street community as such on, on these kinds of issues? You know, my, my office, my agency does not specifically, but the de Blasio administration in different ways. Um, you know, I think for, for city government to, to function at its height, they have to work hand in hand with the private sector. And we definitely do have Wall Street and we have so many different industries, inclu including real estate, that are so important to the future and the development of the city. Um, so that's absolutely something that is, um, that is happening. We have what is called the Economic Development Corporation. And so they also work um, with both Wall Street and incoming businesses to ensure um, that they are thinking strategically about the different industries that we're building and then how they also enter and participate in our community. <laughs> Thank you. We, we have, yeah, we have uh, eight more minutes, yes. Um, before then, you ask your question. If, if, if you wanted to wrap up um, these four pages of communique, uh, which came out of the Urban Summit, or Urban 20 Summit, what would you say are the key words that we should, as citizens of Tokyo or London or New York, uh, should pay attention to in the next for the next year, maybe? Uh, and for what we're asking yes, for the G20 for the, to recognize, I think exactly the fact that there are 30 million citizens in the Tokyo metropolitan region. The number one thing is that city voices and our issues have to be heard. Um, this can't be, you know, a the G20 can't be an exercise in where they're not taking seriously the voices of cities not only represented within the G20, but also cities around. And one of the um, important things that came out over the U20 um, uh, summit mm -hmm. is that this is not about large cities or middle-sized cities. This is all cities. Um, you know, and that is something that is really important, especially when you think about an issue like immigration funding tends to go to the capital city. And really what happens is the overflow goes out into secondary and other smaller cities, mm -hmm. and they get completely ignored and are not getting the infrastructural support or any other funding. Um, yeah. So the, the, the recognition that the city voices need to be heard, but it needs to be cities of all voices are relevant in that climate change that was at the heart of um, uh, the majority of our conversations. Um, this is the first uh, communique that mentions the sustainable development goals and the importance of the SDGs as a framework for us to be able to talk about this, but we're taking that to the G20 right now. And very explicitly, New York City, Helsinki, and a couple of other cities um, have made a call to action around the voluntary local review and to work with national governments to do that. And in fact, um, the Japanese representative for OECD and I were on a panel, and that is something that the Japanese government is doing is working to see um, how each of the cities of all sizes around Japan are looking at a version of the voluntary local mm -hmm. review and getting those inputs for the Japanese government to assess where mm -hmm. they're at. Mm -hmm. So I would say those, the SDGs, climate, um, and the importance of cities of all sizes, and of course, economic development, mm -hmm. which is one of our, um, our key areas. Out of curiosity, uh, was the mayor of Beijing invited? <laughs> Just in case, I don't know. I don't know the China. invitations were mm -hmm. um, specifically. I'm. I would assume so. Mm -hmm. But um, mm -hmm. to the Tokyo government did the um, the invitations. I'm. Mm -hmm. I don't have okay. knowledge of who was invited. Thank you. Yes, sir. Maybe one of the final questions. <laughs> well, the other day we had Governor Koike coming here to uh, celebrate the restoration of the beautiful piece of art which you see right uh, at the, when you come in from, from the entrance. So my question is, have you been able to exchange any uh, specific problems with uh, Governor Koike while you have been here? 
I had um, the opportunity to have a lovely exchange with her, not to exchange any problems. There are no problems <laughs> in New York City and Tokyo that I'm aware of. Um, we, um, we really um, are honored that she hosted the U20, invited us here. Um, she was an incredible host over the last couple of days. Um, and her support of this um, meant that the, um, the, uh, uh, the document was delivered to Prime Minister Abe directly. Mm -hmm. um, and it is very important to get this directly into the hands of the host of the next G20. And so um, the governor has been incredible in that, yeah, the communique. Okay. And so we, um, we had a wonderful exchange and there are no, um, we have a wonderful relationship with the ambassador, the Japanese ambassador to the UN and the consul general. Um, we have a very significant Japanese community in New York City that um, we, we very much value, so. Thank you so much. So much. Any final comments or questions? Yes, please. <laughs> Uh, so uh, my name is Nobuyuki from uh, SGI. Uh, so uh, I assume that you have a lot of uh, ethnic minorities in, in New York City. So I wonder if there's unique effort of listening to those minorities' voices as the oh. city government. Yeah, absolutely. We actually have an agency called the Community Affairs Unit. Um, they are, we are in New York City's five boroughs. Um, the Community Affairs Unit has teams in each of the five boroughs, and then we tend to have representation um, or representatives for like the top immigrant communities. Um, and so we, we work very closely to ensure that their voices are heard. We have a number of different events throughout the year that celebrate the different religious groups. Um, you know, we, we um, are very sensitive to the ways that um, each of our communities want to celebrate themselves in their country, and we want to make sure that the city is part of those celebrations. Um, they also have complaints and concerns, and so we need to make sure that is also happening. So our community affairs unit manages that. We have what are also called community boards in each neighborhood, and that uh, community boards are usually representative of, um, of those communities that live there and are quite diverse in that sense. To, to make our diversity makes sense. You have to have a lot of process and infrastructure to make sure that voices are heard, that you're taking care of issues. You can't just mix everyone and think it's going to work. It's a very deliberative, um, engaged way that we work with our communities to ensure that these aren't segregated pockets, but rather active parts of our community. So New York City is a melting pot, but there's still some sort of um, there's, there's, there's still some stirring, some stirring, stirring the spoon. <laughs> Absolutely. There's, there's good ways to there's stir it. Some, yes, exactly. Okay, um, unless there are any other questions or comments, I'd like to thank uh, Penny Abe Wardena for being here today, this morning. Thank you. thank you also for coming here to listen to her. And um, um, as part of our appreciation, we would like to uh, present you uh, an honorary membership <laughs> oh, wow, thank of our you. club. And, uh, it's such an honor. Thank you so much. I know this is very last minute, and I would like to thank Raiko for making the connection. Thank you very much. <laughs>